This sound of nature, nothing does you hear the snow falling. I love it. I hate stairs. Today, my friend Victor is visiting me and he's in Nagano for the first time. Yep. And he loves snow. I love it. When you think about winter in Japan, what comes to mind? Winter, hiking, snowboarding, going visiting the monkeys and stuff like that. Yeah, snowboarding, monkeys and so on. We do nothing of that today. What we're actually doing is we go to Togakushi, which is a fantastic area in Nagano city, up a mountain, which has a beautiful shrine and a fantastic gate accompanying the shrine. And since Victor likes to take photos and videos, he will be absolutely amazed. If you want to go there yourself, how can you get there? From Nagano Station's Zenkoji exit, go to bus stop number 7 and take bus number 70. Exit at Togakushi Oksha bus stop. Be aware though that in the winter season, which is from December 14th to March 31st, the bus is taking a different route and you have to leave at Togakushi Chusha stop, which is earlier, and walk for 2 kilometers. The bus will not go to Oksha, but to the Togakushi ski resort instead. The drive from Nagano station to the Togakushi Chusha bus stop takes 1 hour and 4 minutes and is 1250 Japanese yen one way, which is about $12.50. With that being said, we took the walk and arrived safely at the gate, marking the starting point of the path leading up the mountain. After the entrance, it's a two kilometers walk. The first one is straight to a phenomenal gate, then one kilometer uphill to the main shrine, Oksha. Uphill also means temperatures down, meaning also more snow. Because of that, and because the gate has a lot to offer by itself, we were not sure if we would actually make it to the shrine or not. This sound of nature, nothing does you hear the, the, the snow falling. I love it. It's so relaxing. This is the gate. I think I didn't overpromise, and this is, in my eyes, the peak of beauty in Japanese winter. The gate lies between spectacularly large Japanese cedar trees, some of which are believed to be up to 900 years old. When you are lucky with the weather, it offers everything a photographer could hope for. The red gate contrasting the white snow, the giant trees dwarfing any humans. The guardian deities gracefully protecting the path that lies ahead. Let's ask Victor what he thinks about the area. Uh, to be honest, this is more than I could have ever asked for. This is, a, this is amazing, and this is something that I've always wanted to experience for myself. Thank you. Are you filming? <laughs> so, even though I love the snow, one of the things that is something you have to watch out for is the fact that it gets cold. And the fact that you're like hiking through here, and if you're carrying a lot of gear, you tend to warm up almost to the point where you feel like it's way too hot. You start to take off your jacket, take off your gloves, etc. But the second you stand still, you have to remember that it's still like negative four degrees out here, right? <laughs> so then it starts to freeze. So before it actually gets too cold, make sure you start warming up again and uh, move around a little bit more. Stay safe. Don't become popsicle. And because we didn't want to become popsicles, we decided to get moving again and take on the challenge. Walking up the mountain, towards the shrine. Soon after the gate, it started to get uphill. I hate stairs. How many more do we have to do? Uh, all of them. <laughs> okay, let's go. Now, one word of advice, if you ever come there during winter, you can actually rent these snowshoes which will give you a bigger surface when walking. We didn't know that, but we wish we did. So Victor, yeah. this shrine, that's not it. No? No. You have to continue. You continue, I'm gonna go back. Uphill means temperatures down. This also means more snow. I must say, the hardest thing when coming here in winter is definitely not the stairs, not that it's uphill, but the snow. So as you can see, it's like almost hip height now. And there's just a small path 
for essentially one person and then if somebody comes in our direction we have to find a way somehow like push aside snow uh, trample it down and then evade the people that are coming So we arrived at the shrine, Victor. Finally, it's cool. Which one was better though, the uh, gate or the shrine? You know what? I'm not gonna lie. The gate was better. <laughs> like even though, like the shrine itself is is beautiful. I mean, you're surrounded by snow, trees, the mountain, and everything. But just like if you're coming here strictly for photography, then like the gate just seems like it has more to offer. Yeah, I agree. So the spectacular thing is definitely the, the gate. And if you come for pilgrimage, like the religious thing, that's mm. the shrine. Yeah. It's still beautiful. I would love to come out here in the fall time and see Oh yeah. See what it's like out here in yeah. the fall. And now though, um, it's getting pretty cold. It's like minus seven. Oh yeah. <laughs> Should we go back and get some food? Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Especially yeah. since we have four kilometers of snow to go through. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do that. We are going back now, but Victor is there he is, there he is. It's cold. <laughs> it is. Let's, go. Let's continue. <laughs> now we have to go down here, all the way through the snow. It's so cold. When I was touching my tripod, my gloves stick to it. <laughs> That's how cold it is. And also, the fingers of my gloves, now it's better. But before, they were like fr frozen, they couldn't be moved. <sighs> But I still, I love snow. Victor also loves snow, so it's like a perfect combination. After a four kilometers walk without any unforeseen occurrences, we boarded the bus back to Nagano, where we stopped at a local izakaya or Japanese style bar. So what we have here is teba gyoza. Gyoza is some kind of dumpling with a dough on the outside and the filling. And this is the same, but on the outside is not dough, but a chicken wing. So it's a chicken wing stuffed with gyoza filling? Yes. What did they do to the chicken? <laughs> they made it better. <laughs> did they make it better? We're about to find out for... Oh, that's a, that's a thick wing. Not bad. You got the, the flavor of the chicken. It's very oily. The gyoza needs a little bit more garlic, a little bit more pepper. I think this would be like spot on. But as it is, I mean, it's pretty solid. I'd recommend you try it at least once. One of Nagano's specialities are soba noodles. I got mushroom soba, which was good. Victor, you have the tempura soba. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Right now, it's literally just soba. So I need to dump some of this uh, tempura in here. We have, I believe that's kiman. Kiman is what, like, green green pepper? This is nasu, which is eggplant. And we have shrimp. And this is mushroom. Okay, pretty good. I think if I was to rate this uh, soba, it would get Maybe six out of ten temperas. That's all I got. I'm tired. I'm ready to go to sleep. And with that, we went back to the station where our ways parted. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and see you next time. Do something funny. <laughs> Do I look like your monkey in front of YouTube? <laughs> Are you trying to use me for clout? It's not gonna work. I don't have any followers. <laughs> <laughs>